Welcome to Talking Tax on Think Tech Hawaii on a given Thursday at 10 o'clock in the morning, our time. Uh, I am Tom Yamachika with the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. Uh, Jay Fidel, who usually hosts this show, is off for the day. Lucky him. And we are talking tax today, uh, but we're concentrating on we've got bills. You know, sometimes we wonder just how lucky we are to live in Hawaii. You know, we know it's a pricey place, but sometimes it takes raw statistics to drive that home. This, this week, we're looking at statistics from DOXO, D O X O, uh, which is a bill payment network that boasts that they have 7 million subscribers throughout the, 90, the United States, covering 97% of US zip codes and dealing with 120,000 unique billers. And that's, that's at uh, doxo.com. In a recently released report, and, and you see the uh, report URL flashing at the bottom of the screen, uh, that company followed the 10 most common household bills, and they account for $4.6 trillion in economic activity annually. Uh, these include mortgage, rent, auto loans, utilities, which include electric, gas, water, and sewer, waste and recycling. They also took a look at auto insurance, cable, internet and phone, uh, health insurance, mobile phone, alarm and security, and life insurance. Those are the 10 most common household bills. According to the report, the average US household spends $2,003 monthly and $24,032 a year on these bills. Uh, the biggest ones, of course, are mortgage, uh, rent, and auto loan. So about 40% of households uh, pay mortgage at, at a cost of $547 monthly, rent uh, with 35% of households at $395, and 73% of households have an auto loan uh, with an average cost per month of $316. So these bills cover an average of 22% of US household spending. Now, how does that uh, stack up with what we experienced here in Hawaii? In this study, Hawaii wins first prize and by a wide margin. Average bill costs in Hawaii are $2,911 per month, 45% above the national average and taking up a whopping 44% of household income. And we're gonna show you kind of graphically how uh, the different categories of bills shake out. So let's take a look at slide number one. So these are the, the, uh, the top five bills by, by volume, in, you know, in terms of dollar volume, with the Hawaii average compared with the US average and Hawaii percent of households uh, versus US percent of households. So we have like, you know, differing amounts, but the uh, percentage of households for which the bill applies is, is not that much different from the national average. So we have um, some interesting uh, little interesting little comparisons to make over here. And we're gonna see that in, in a percentage in just a moment, but let's go on now to the second slide, which is the other five categories. So we've got mobile phones, uh, cable, health insurance, alarm, and life insurance. These are the smaller bills, but as you can see, at least for the, for the first three rows, there's a lot of penetration. 97% uh, 90, of households in Hawaii have mobile phones, 94% of US households do, and the, and the prices uh, are a bit higher, but not that, it's not that bad. Uh, the communication, uh, thankfully is a little bit better uh, for a cable set, internet and satellite, uh, more on par with the national average. Uh, health insurance, uh, we have a lot more 
uh, probably because of our prepaid health care act but it doesn't seem that the prices have gone down and matter of fact it's kind of the opposite direction uh, with health prices uh, being 250 dollars per month as opposed to 120 something dollars as the u.s average now what we're going to do uh, in slide number three is we take a look at the percentage comparison and then let's leave that up for a while uh, so we can go through uh, some of these categories and and kind of try to figure out what's going on now in our state the biggest difference between us and the national average is in the category of health insurance where we are basically double uh, what the U.S. average is, and we have to kind of wonder why. Uh, the medical professionals here are in short supply, and they say they're not getting a chance to make ends meet. I mean, I, I hear them at the legislature all the time uh, saying, you know, we've got uh, a, a horrible business environment. Uh, we have a horrible tax environment. And uh, so what, what is it that is making the health insurance uh, double the US average? If it's not what the physicians are getting paid, is it because uh, Hawaii is uh, sicker than the average US person? That can't be true either because we, we hear reports all the time saying, uh, Hawaii is one of the healthiest places in the United States. So maybe what we got to do is uh, take a look at the insurers, uh, what they are bringing, you know, pulling down out of uh, the Hawaii market. You know, we uh, it's, it's probably not a coincidence uh, that health insurers are in a regulated industry. It's controlled by the government. So health insurers you know, put in proposals and they need approval from, in, 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 in our case, the insurance commissioner to charge the rates that they actually do. So there's some government involvement here in getting uh, or establishing uh, health insurance rates. I mean, you would think that the rates would be uh, lower comparatively because there's more market penetration uh, due to the fact that we have our prepaid health care act uh, from I think 1974 and uh, most uh, households here in Hawaii are required to have health insurance uh, through their employer but you know and, but as we all know uh, you know the, the employer pays it but there's a cost to all of us anyway uh, and and not only from the monthly premiums, but also from the co-pays. So why is it that health insurance is so much higher than the national average? That's kind of one thing that policymakers should take, uh, you know, take a look at. Let's go back to slide three and see what else we've got. Um, alarm and security is the next uh, outlier followed. Uh, followed by utilities. Now let's let's look at utilities for a second. When you take a look at mortgage and rent, they're both 50% higher than the national average, but I think that's explainable by uh, property values. You have uh, a larger piece of property or a more costly piece of property, they're not larger, but a more costly piece of property you have, uh, the, the bigger a loan you got to take out. And the and the more you're paying as uh, on the mortgage or for rent as a result, so so those two perhaps depend on uh, property values, and yeah yeah we're on an island, so naturally uh, property values are high. The interesting part about this is utilities, which come, which. You know, everybody needs to, to pay for like water, sewer, and so forth. They're 68% higher than the national average. And the, the question is why? Um, 
maybe again it's because of government involvement uh, utilities are monopolies uh, that are regulated by the government uh, state government in particular and that's and that's why they get a, a chance to uh, charge you perhaps more than the market would have given them on their own uh, typically a utility uh, is allowed a specific rate of return by law, uh, but that rate of return may not comport with uh, what the rest of the economy is facing. So, you know, like the rest of our, you know, the rest of the businesses here in Hawaii can get killed and the utilities will still be making a, uh, a statutory rate of return. So, one of the, perhaps one of the uh, reasons for our high cost of living here in Hawaii uh, is regulation. Uh, utilities come to mind, health insurance comes to mind, life insurance at 50% uh, higher than the national average also comes to mind. Alarm and security is kind of an outlier, I think, because it's not really a regulated industry, and yet it's 71% higher than the national average. So we got to wonder about that. The other, but the, and but there are other categories, uh, such as auto loans, cable internet, and satellite, uh, where we're pretty much on par with the rest of the nation. Uh, auto insurance is a little bit higher, but not that much. Um, so. I mean, yes, we have, you know, higher transportation costs for uh, things like gasoline, uh, but that doesn't go into the price of an auto loan or auto insurance. And I, th I think our accident rate is probably comparable with other uh, jurisdictions on the mainland. So, so we're kind of on par with uh, those jurisdictions as well. Okay. So, so at least uh, we've got some categories of bills here uh, that are not grotesquely out of control, though we, we are kind of suspicious about the regulated industries um, like uh, health insurance and utilities, and you know perhaps uh, some action to um, address these at a, a government level uh, may, be, uh, may be helpful for, for all of us. Now, I've been uh, notified that it's about time for our mid-session break, so we're gonna do that, and we'll come back into talking tax in about one minute. Welcome back to Talking Tax. We've been talking about bills, bills, and bills uh, here in Hawaii as compared with the national average. Uh, we have been talking about a report from DOXO, D-O-X-O, uh, at doxo.com. They are a na nationwide uh, organization that deals with bills and facilitates a bill payment. So we've been looking at a report uh, that's been powered by that company. Uh, I have mentioned that 
but we are the most expensive state for household bills. There are others. And let me kind of give you the lineup of the, the 10 most expensive states. So the 10th most expensive state is New Hampshire with a uh, 2,256 monthly bill expense per household uh, covering 35% of household income. You gotta wonder what New Hampshire because uh, they don't have sales tax. So they don't have uh, problems with the GET like we do. Washington State's next on at number nine with 2277. That's $2,277 per month. And 30%, uh, 37% of household income taken up with that. Alaska, which is which has almost no tax, uh, but has other geographic um, challenges is at $2,334 per month and 36% uh, of household income. New York is next at number six, and I'm sorry, number seven. Uh, they're at 2361 at 39%. Connecticut at 2380 and 35%. Maryland uh, taking its cue from uh, DC, which is kind of a pricey place. They're at 2456 at 34%. Then there's Taxachusetts, um, 2511 and 36%. New Jersey, also a very high tax state at 2610 and 36%. And of course, uh, number two is what you'd expect California. There, they clock in at $2,649 uh, in these bills per month at 41% of household income. Be there, and they are beat not only, I mean, only by one state and that, that would be us. Now the 10 least expensive states uh, for household bills are perhaps what you would expect. It would be Nebraska uh, at the, uh, uh, the 10th the least expensive, Alabama at ninth, New Mexico, uh, which interestingly enough has a gross receipts tax just like ours, but they come in at 1663 and 41% of household income. Uh, they're the eighth least expensive states for household bills. Then there's South Dakota, Oklahoma, and Kentucky. So Looks like some more red states are coming in there. Indiana, Mississippi, Arkansas, that's the deep south. And the least expensive state for household bills is West Virginia at a mere $1,400 per month per household and 38% of household income. So, those are the, um, the, the, the top 10 and the bottom 10. And, uh, and, and the question then becomes, well, uh, what is it uh, that is causing all of these anomalies? Is it, is it the red state versus blue state uh, problem? Is it a... Um, uh, the incidence of taxes, uh, that's, that's probably not true because you have Alaska and Washington uh, with no income tax being uh, way the heck up there. Uh, Washington does have a, uh, a kind of hefty sales tax, uh, as does California, and they're way up there too. Um, you do see the, the, the highest tax states being represented in the most expensive states for household bills. So California, New Jersey, Massachusetts, New York, Connecticut, those are all famously high tax states. Um, and then uh, in contrast, uh, some, of the, some of the states with no tax, uh, or at least no income tax are, are showing up on the, on the bottom, uh, but not as many as you would expect. So like South, South Dakota is there. Uh, we, 
uh, Florida is not, Delaware is not. Other states that you typically think of, and Nevada is not, as uh, you know, having having no income tax uh, for normal people, they're not showing up on this list. So it must be something else than taxes that's you know that that that's causing this uh, uh, this anomaly. Uh, we are ending a little bit early today, and uh, I'm I'm sure uh, Jay would have uh, given me a, a lot more stuff to react to uh, if he were on the show. But again, he. Uh, he has the day off the lucky guy. And um, uh, we thank you for your attention today here on Talking Tax at Big Tech Away. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.